Howdy folks, this is Jagos, and today we are going to talk about the last aspect of the gaming industry that really needs to be talked about and discussed at nauseum and at length. The fact of the matter is, I didn't sit here and talk about the journalism aspect because it is so corrupt and it is so morally bankrupt right now that to really get into it, you have to go to a lot more depth than anything else. Because a lot of people have been waylaid by bad journalism. And that bad journalism has given rise to a lot of demagogues such as Anita Sarkeesian, such as Zoe Quinn, and such as Scumbag Steve, who we call Brianna Wu. Um, a lot of people are sitting here saying, well, gamers harassed all three of them. Let me go ahead and let me start this thing with a caveat. Gamergate was never about these three women. It was never about gamers harassing three women. What Gamergate was about was a corruption of journalists that had been going on for a long time and then they deflect that criticism onto gamers because they cannot sit here and see outside of their own corruption. That tells you that the entire corruption is systemic. There is a monopoly at play on gaming journalists, whereupon they sit here and rely on publishers instead of developers as well as gamers themselves for, rel for sustenance in any way, shape, or form. We have to sit here and we have to go back to, say, the 90s and the 80s to sit here and see the corruption of the gaming media. The 90s saw a concentration along with the PS2, along with the PS3 era, we saw those monopolies begin to form. What publishers basically did was use journalists as a marketing unit. And from that, they got most of their information from publishers. And for the most part, you really had no way of sitting here and contradicting those elements and those journalists because where were they getting paid from? If you're getting swag from publishers, the fact of the matter is you're going to be less lenient on, you're going to be less, uh, well, let's not say less tolerant, but you're not going to sit here and look at their mistakes as much as you're going to look at the mistakes of other people. When you're getting paid by publishers or developers, I mean developers and gamers, not necessarily publishers, you're going to have a different relationship to the publishers that you criticize and what they sit here and push out the door. You can see this in the types of games that are being played and going around right now. When you look at Capcom, Capcom has made so many Street Fighter games, it is ridiculous. You can't sit here and grade that effectively like you do an Arcana Hearts. You can't change that from the other types of fighting games that are out there. You can't do that the same way as you do other games. Because it's come out in so many different iterations. It's been an evolution of time. And somebody who looks at all of the Street Fighter games in context will sit here and say, well, they didn't really change a lot except minor changes, and that should sit here and be something that is affected in a final score, or do you want to play this series, or what has this series done that has been different, such as plot, plot elements, such as music elements, such as gameplay elements. All of those should come up when you have a very independent source that can sit here and do those types of things. And in the underbar, I'll go ahead and I'll show you an independent source that is independent from um, those games, such as the Nostalgia Gamer, that can sit here and critique the entire series as something different than what happens without that difference. That is why Nowadays, you see the development of YouTubers that are, are independent reviewers. They don't get paid by the publishers directly. Now, 
That doesn't mean that publishers aren't looking at ways to sit here and get paid or sit here and control what the message is. This is something that has always been a development cycle. If you look at what publishers have been able to get away with, one of the major corruptions that they did was due to publishing industry, uh, not the publishing, the journalism aspect. When Mass Effect 3 came up as an issue, the ending, and they called you entitled gamers, that was a monopoly in play. They had control of the journalists. This is something that came up before Gamergate and before this distraction that is all of these women are being harassed in the gaming industry. Anybody that looks at these issues understands that journalism has been corrupt for a long time. And because journalism has been corrupt, people need a distraction. And the biggest distraction to come up was the term of the SJW, the Social Justice Warrior. People have been going to fight every last social justice warrior on the internet. For me, personally, I look at this as nothing more than fighting fanboys. Because that's exactly what these people are. They're fanboys of Anita Sarkeesian. They're fanboys of Brianna Wu. Even though she doesn't have that many nowadays because she's gone off the deep end further more times than anybody else. And they're fanboys of Zoe Quinn who have, I mean, we've had our criticisms. If you want to see my criticisms, they're one of the most popular uploads that I have because some people want to have those hour-long uh, hour long discourses about these people. I made one, well, let me say, I did one group of videos for one person, and then I did one video myself that added on to that foundational basis but there's really nothing else to be said because the fact is they've never been anything but tangentially related to the issues of corruption of journalists. Now, when you look at the corruption of journalists, what happened with Anita Sarkeesian? All of these journalists sat here and believed her word about what she was saying instead of anybody else. They did not believe that gamers had an issue with her Kickstarter or anything like that. That was the issue. What people deflected was, well, all gamers are harassers. Well, if you intentionally put your gamer, your um, Kickstarter, on 4chan to make money, that sits here and says something. If nobody wants to talk about that, then the door is to your left. Because the fact of the matter is, you're not here for the actual issues. You're here for a distraction. That is why I don't really get into Anita Sarkeesian and all that other stuff today. Because you would rather sit here and deal with this reality that this woman is representative of everything of liberalism or socialism or whatever your bad guy of the day is instead of actually dealing with the actual arguments of the day. So the arguments of the day is what is the wrong with journalism today? As I'm saying here, publishers have control of journalists. That is the issue. So we've gotten to the base root. We've gotten into the caveat. If you're if you're focused on a distraction, you can find plenty of videos, <coughs> plenty of videos that are talking about that distraction. That is the social justice warrior. Everybody goes on the Twitter, finds every last thing they can. Because it's easier to find those things and discuss those things and talk about those things than to sit here and say that there's an entire system that is corrupt. Publishers are corrupt. There is no reason why Harada is sitting here talking about SJWs. The reason that he's talking about them is because it's a marketing gimmick at this point in time. We saw that marketing gimmick with Play Asia. We saw that marketing gimmick now. People can just bring up the boogeyman of SJWs. Oh my God, they're taking away your video games. You got to sit here and pay for our, our things. That is why I made that Gamergate as a marketing strategy now. Because that is exactly what's going on. 
It is a marketing strategy to sit here and force you and compel you to part with your money, even though the gaming industry, as it stands, and again, I have to sit here and make this caveat. There's the gaming industry, there's the gaming communities. And I have to sit here and I have to say that the gaming industry is beginning to crack. We see this crack with Konami. We see this crack with Capcom. We see stronger we see stronger parts of the industry such as Namco Bandai with the Tekken series but the gaming industry currently is breaking apart the reason that is breaking apart is because some of the games and some of the ideas have grown stagnant they've staled they've people are moving away from the journalists that have basically sat here and vilified their own audience that is the core issue that should be talked about and discussed and it has not been plenty of demagogues have taken this and taken it in various different directions to mislead the public about what is at the issue at the core again one more time publishers corrupt journalists that is this that is the relationship that we currently have and if nobody is talking about that they're not sitting here they're not on your side they're sitting here trying to get you on their agenda. The conservative agenda is that SJWs are causing a moral and communal decay. Liberals are sitting here saying gamers are harassers of women on the extreme side. And other groups are, have their own agenda, but that's the main one that you're going to hear. Because, again, why is everything a fight between liberals and conservatives? It's because that's the easiest battleground to sit here and get people to talk within a small perimeter, especially dur during an election season. This is something that you all have to avoid. You all have fought fanboys before. Use the same tactics as if you're fighting an extreme fanboy and you sit here and you dismiss those people and move on the hell away from them. If you've got an Xbox fanboy, what do you do against that Xbox fanboy? You don't sit here and try to make, you know, a valid argument and claim. You sit here, you let them talk, and then you move on. Because that fanboy is going to believe that Microsoft can do no wrong. Likewise, we have fanboys of Anita Sarkeesian. You cannot talk to these people because they believe that Anita Sarkeesian has done no wrong. You've done this for PS4. You've done this for PS3. We've had this console war since the beginning, but it's not as effective nowadays because people can be informed and fight against all the corrupt bullshit that has been going on with Microsoft, with Sony, with Nintendo. And there's a big report that I want to do for Nintendo at a later time, but I'm not sure if a lot of people are going to be focused on it. But we'll try it, see how it goes, and see what goes comes from it. The fact of the matter is, think of SJWs as the newest form of extreme fanboy. That's really all they are. Now, what happens with an extreme fanboy? They're given bad information, and usually they act upon it in some way, shape, or form. When they act upon that information, they sit here and give you a flawed analogy of the situation. If you've ever fought a fanboy, like, you know, arguments-wise, not physically, but with arguments, they will not sit here and be able to respond to you going outside of the parameters that they've set for themselves. And no matter how long Gamergate happens, it's still going to be about the corruption of the journalists. It's still going to be about Nathan Grayson being too close to a source. It's still going to be about the journalists that we were supposed to trust and believe in. And effectively, most gamers moving on away from that source to people that have more valid criticisms and claims. Now, that doesn't mean that not everybody... everybody goes away from Destructoid, goes away from New Statesman, goes away from all these other things. But this tells us that we have a journalism problem. Most of these quote-unquote journalists are actually propagandists. They're willing to tell you lies 
to push an agenda. That is pretty much all that's really all there is to it. Now, I don't get paid by anybody to do this kind of stuff. What happens is I just make this, I write these, I think about these scripts, I put down these notes, and then I talk about it. I don't want you all to sit here and think that, oh, I'm just some bastion of hope and light and all this other stuff. No. If you agree, disagree with my opinion, I sit here and have the comments open so you, you all can tell me exactly why you all believe in it or don't believe in it. Um, if I like a game, I tell you exactly why I like a game. If I don't tell you, if I tell you about a game or I tell you I got a copyright strike, I tell you exactly what in the world came about with that. So you all have the facts and the information right up front. I don't sit here and try to hide facts. I don't sit here and try to hide things from you all. That sits here and is an aspect of journalism. I want to sit here and have stronger journalism, so I practice that, and it's a citizen journalism aspect to it. If I have a video game running in the background, normally I will talk about it and show you all what exactly it is. If I use a Phoenix Wright character as an avatar, I, sh I usually tell you all, at least in one of my videos, where I got the character, what the character represents, etc., etc., etc. So, if you all see something like Cami Meal, which I did for my last video, I was sleepy and tired, and I told people, "Hey, here's Phoenix Wright. Here's Cami Meal. You can look her up. You can see what her backstory is yourself." So, all of this is the new type of journalism that is becoming the norm. YouTubers are taking over. And people are going to more trusted outlets. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not go they're going to Silicon Era less. It means they're going to Silicon Era less. It means that they're going to Destructoid less. It means that they're going away from some of these institutions that were built up when they no longer represent the actual gamer. And people are, just, are trusting journalists less because the journalists have lied to them. That is really the big point of Gamergate. You had a monopoly that has been set up since the 90s. It has been established that publishers sat here and effectively ruined their relationship with journalists. They became a propaganda outlet instead of, and a marketing outlet. And when that was discovered by gamers, they moved on. They took their ball. They found journalists that either represent developers better or they represent gamers better. It is really that simple. And anybody trying to sit here and distract you with discussion of SJWs is really just trying to push an agenda. Now, I know this is taking a little bit of time to sit here and explain, but I hope that you all sit here and see that this final aspect, the journalist, is probably one of the most important ones because the solutions to this is that the journalists either have to come to Jesus and know their own limitations and decide, well, we're no longer going to take this corruption lightly and we're going to sit here and seriously do the things that we need to do, which is unlikely. Or people move on and make new institutions that sit here and represent themselves. That Not only is that developers or independent developers, it's also gamers that have to sit here and recognize that newer institutions have to be built, they have to be formed, and they have to be protected from with gamers, with developers, and usually anybody that's affiliated with those two groups, as I've explained before. Other than that, that's the main um, point of this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.